Hi everyone, this video is video number one of a series intended to help you with the analysis for your bomb calorimetry lab. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to find the delta T for your bomb calorimetry reaction. So to begin, I highly recommend obtaining a, an Excel spreadsheet of all of your data where you have the times and you also have the temperatures for all of your data. So you'll have a series of entries and time and a series of entries and temperature. It'd probably be a good idea to have that close at hand for an Excel spreadsheet. Next, I recommend that you create some sort of a plot where along this axis, you have the time during your uh, bomb calorimetry experiment, and then along this axis, you have temperature. Now, recall that by convention, time is lowercase t, and by convention, temperature is uppercase t, like so. So if you plot all the data in your Excel spreadsheet, you should see something fairly similar to figure three in your lab protocol you should see a fairly flat region where the temperature remains mostly constant. Then there will be a rising temperature, and then you should see it peak and then gradually taper off, something like that. So what you're going to need to do first is to extract this portion of your data. Right from the very beginning when you start to collect it, and ending before ignition, before the temperature really starts to rise. And you're going to take all of that data, extracting it out from the Excel table. You're going to have axis of temperature versus time, except now Excel, when you plot this, uh, Excel will probably show you a series of data that looks something similar to this. And you'll, you're going to want to make a scatter plot very much like this, and then create a trend line that runs through those data points like so. And then once you create that scatter plot, you're going to write down the trend line equation. Although instead of x and y and m and b, I'm going to write this formula in a slightly different way. Temperature is the y-axis, and it equals R1, the slope, times little t for time, plus K1, like so. Okay, then you're just going to do the same exact thing with this data right here, stretching from about the moment where the temperature reaches its maximum and ending with the last bit of data. And you're going to take that chunk of data straight out of your Excel spreadsheet, and you're going to create another scatter plot of that data, here of time and temperature, and this time your data points are going to be gradually falling like so, gradually falling. And you're going to create another trend line like this, and you're going to get a t equals r2, little t, plus k2. This is going to represent the slope of the pre-period, that's R1, and then R2 is going to represent the slope of the post-period, like so. Okay, so now, assuming that you've got those two quantities, what you're going to need to do is identify the spot in time that happened right around ignition, right before ignition would be ideal. So you'd actually, you'd actually take a look at approximately what that time was and then look down in your Excel spreadsheet and find out where that is. It doesn't matter exactly where it is. It doesn't, it's not that important as long as you get it sometime before ignition, but um, not so early that it's too far off in this direction. And we're going to call that time A. All 
right? So that's time A. And then we're gonna come up here and choose one of these times right up here, right at or near the maximum. And we're going to call that one time C. So once we've identified exactly which times those are, we're going to find them down here in our Excel spreadsheet and then look across to the temperatures that they correspond to. So we're going to get a TA and a T, oops, we're going to get a TC like that. And so if we were to plot those, then you would see right there, that would be TA. And then right around here, this would be TC. Okay, now the next step is to find TB, which is going to be located approximately somewhere in that region there. But to find it, um, we're going to go 60% of the way up between TA and TC. And there's an equation you can use to find TB. TB is going to equal TA plus 0.6 times TC minus TA. And that represents that location, TB. Okay, so then once you calculate that number, TB, you're going to find it somewhere here in your data, and you're going to look across to the entry where that temperature is first crossed, and that's going to become time B. So if I were to represent what time B represented, it would be about that time, right about there. Okay, so once you have all of those quantities, then you can just plug it straight into this equation that you find in your protocol. Delta T equals TC minus TA minus R1, B minus A minus R2, C minus B. And as of now, you should have everything you need to enter into that equation. And now just a couple more words about the whole purpose of this. What this is actually calculating is it's extrapolating out the temperature change. I'm going to use a different color. It's extrapolating out the temperature change that would be occurring from the pre-period and extrapolating back what the temperature change would be from the post-period and then choosing a spot that happens to exist partway through that ignition. And the experts have just found that 60% of the way between T A and T C seem to produce the best results. And that height right there, that's delta T. So in that equation down here, that is specifically what you're doing. You're extrapolating forward from the pre-period, backwards from the post-period, and calculating that change in temperature. And so Keep in mind that you're going to need to do this for both samples in the lab. So you would have to do it for both benzoic acid and for naphthalene. Or if you did some other material, you'll, you'd have to do this analysis for those ones too. That's all I've got for this video. I hope you'll join me for the next few videos in this series where I show you how to do other parts of this analysis.